Welcome to the Wicked Kitchen, guys. Today, we're doing an oil versus no oil mushroom steak, barbecue mushroom steak even. It's an amazing recipe that we've done already in the past, but today I'm comparing using oil and no oil, and we're gonna bust all those myths. So stay tuned. So the oil versus no oil with the mushroom steaks is what we're gonna talk about. You guys, I posted a picture on Instagram and there were so many comments about people asking for, for more of these style recipes, so we're gonna oblige. I'm gonna do this as a versus. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! All right, so I'm gonna start with a no oil recipe and we'll show how I'll just show my thought process and how I would go about cooking this one. You know, we have experience with writing the Whole Foods Market cookbook. There's all no oil recipes in there. No oil, low sugar, no salt. Um, and then also Wicked has, uh, we have some recipes in the cookbook as well for no oil recipes. And both my brother and I's experience with working with Whole Foods and really pioneering the whole healthy eating program there. We know how to do this. So I think we got you covered. All right, so let's get this going. I'm gonna get a, a cast iron on, on a medium high heat. All right, so we get the pan heating up. You wanna make sure it's nice and hot, just like that. I've, now I've already trimmed these, the bottoms. I'm just adding right to the pan here. All right, so. I've added the mushrooms to here, and I'm not gonna add anything else, so there's no liquid going in. I am gonna use water for this recipe. I thought about using beer, I thought about using white wine. You can use whatever kind of liquid you want, except for oil. It means the stove's heated up. So I preheated the oven to 420. Both recipes, I'm gonna cook the same. It's just how we do this pressing method is the difference. So this is on. It's already starting to burn. They're not, not burn, but uh, heat up. Right, and I am gonna press them without anything else in here, just as it is. Okay. So the thing about the, with the no oil, you really ju just have to put a little bit more thought into it and I don't want it sticking to the pan. I prefer to use cast iron pans, even with the no oil bit, because it's already got a natural non-stick, because it's so seasoned, it's naturally non-stick. So you could use Teflon pans uh, and then press it with another heavy pan on top. That might work as well, but we're using cast iron for this. So I have that going. What I want to do with this is to make sure that the water comes out of it. And it's such a dry heat right now, it's really, it's not as quick and easy as when I do use oil. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water. This is just plain tap water. And then I'm gonna press them again. So that steam will help cook them. And it's gonna take a few minutes to go back and forth. Uh, we'll flip it a couple times. But I'm gearing for a really good result on both of them, so. them again. What I'm going to do is wait until all that water is evaporated. And, but as I keep pressing them, I use a little bit more force. 
because I want to drive some of that liquid out of the mushrooms. <laughs> just gonna check and see how it looks. Okay, so this is, looks nice for me and I will just flip them. And you see there's nothing on the bottom. All right, so I've just flipped them onto, from the stem side down, that I always put them stem side down, and I flipped them onto the petal side. Now here is where I want to be a little bit more careful because the petals are a little bit more fragile. And that oil, when I do use oil, it allows it not to stick so much to the pan. So I'm gonna let, letting it kind of like just cook a little bit before I put the pan on top of it to kind of form It'll help form like a, a, a layer between, you know, when the mushroom heats up, it'll heat on the exterior and help form a layer to help it not stick. So I'm not gonna press it right away. I'm gonna give it about one to two minutes and just like this, and then I will press it. And there's not much sizzle coming out of it. So what I'm going to want to do, I'm going to add a little bit more water here just to create a little bit more steam. So it's almost like we're steaming them shut, which isn't a bad idea and it's given me some other ideas as far as creating just that meaty texture out of the mushroom. So whether it's like a uh, creating a chicken breast or a raw piece of steak, this is the method that we could use and then you could do whatever you want with it from from the press. Hopefully that makes sense. And then a little bit more water. Make sure it's in, and then I'm gonna press them. Ow, again. Remember, these pans get really hot. Okay guys, so I haven't seasoned them at all yet. I still want to get, just get them to the place where then we can season them and start working that way. But for now, I pressed them down to I think the consistency that'll work well. And I'm just checking now just to make sure they're not sticking. Just lift them each one up and it's worked fine. Okay, so that is at a place where I'm happy with how it's pressed like this. I'm gonna start seasoning on the top of these. So to, for the barbecue, you can use the Wicked Kitchen barbecue, spicy barbecue rub that we have in Tesco, or you can make your own. So here I'm in Arizona at the moment, so I'm gonna make my own blend. So I'm using a little bit of smoked paprika for that added smokiness. A little bit of smoked paprika, some garlic granulars, granulated garlic. And I'm seasoning them pretty well. And then I'm also using some onion granular, un granulated onion. And these are just pinchfuls, guys. I have no measurements. I would say half a teaspoon maybe. I'm gonna use, I have this um, blended, it's like a uh, sage, thyme, and rosemary blend. So just a little bit of that, cause I want that smell and that familiar flavor and the notes in the background. I'm gonna use salt, just a pinch of salt. Now this is no oil, not no salt recipe. So I do like to add a little bit of salt and black pepper. So we have a good amount of this. And now I'm gonna flip these over. Oh, and you can see they're starting to slowly stick a little bit more. But there we go. So you can see there. Now you'll notice the difference when we do the one with oil of the crispiness and bits outside. 
So there is that. But I really do think that this is gonna come out fine, just as good. It just takes a little bit more thought. Now I'm gonna season both of these sides. Same seasonings, black pepper, salt, onion, granular, garlic granulated, smoked paprika, and then a little bit of that uh, holiday rub kind of spice there, the thyme, sage, and rosemary. Okay, so I do want to press this just a little bit just to make sure all the sides are getting seared well. Okay. Now it's start, it smells delicious. It's working. Let's check and see what this looks like underneath it. You can see that. That's the stem side up. It is seared a little nicely. So I'm happy with these as they are. I'll do this quick little press on here just to make sure this side gets it the same treatment. I'm gonna use this as it is. I'm gonna just shut off this heat. All right guys, so I have some barbecue sauce here. Most store-bought barbecue sauces do not have any oil. We do have some recipes to make your own. We also have some no oil recipes, I believe in the Whole Foods Market cookbook that we wrote for them. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just take it. Yeah. I'm gonna put it here. Yeah, and then to here. Oh, you know what? Will you give me a marker? Toss me a marker, please. So you can Black. Track. Yeah. You want a video? I just want to video this. So I'm writing no oil. You get that? So this one's a no oil one, just so we're clear. Okay, so I'm just gonna dunk these, submerge these. You can never have enough barbecue sauce, guys. So whether you're cooking with oil or not, barbecue sauce is the star of the show. So this is, I have bought, store-bought two bottles of barbecue sauce, so that's here. Now you can make your own. Like I said, we have recipes and there's no oil barbecue sauce is easy. So I'm just gonna submerge this, making sure it's all covered, which is great. And then drop it right here, okay? So I'm gonna do that with all the pieces, just right in, and there's plenty on each one. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna rinse out this pan so it's just the same as the other one was before when we started, and then we'll get right back to the oil verses. Okay, so we're gonna get right into the oil version, so I'll use oil on these ones. Um, you know, just to note for my own sake, a lot of this, you know, I've done this once before, so this is a really good learning for me as well um, in how I can improve on no oil and oil ones, right? So I really believe the more you know about the whole topic, whether you cook in with oil or not, it's good to know both ways because it just helps you be a better cook and a better chef. So that said, I have the pan that I just wiped out and it's the difference between wiping out a pan with that you didn't use any oil on it, it's definitely a little bit more, you know, it wasn't as easy, it's not hard, but it wasn't as easy to clean it. I just had to scrub it a little bit um, and now it's totally dry so I would, naturally care for this pan. 
What I'm gonna do is turn on the heat again. Medium high heat, same heat, same temperature, number five. And I'm gonna let that heat back up. Okay, let's test it. Okay, so that's hot enough. So there's three quarters of a cup of oil in here. We'll see how much I use of this. I am gonna use enough for the, to coat the pan to start off with. We'll just swirl that around, making sure there's enough. So I'm gonna add, start adding the mushrooms right to it. All right, so all I did was add the mushrooms. I added a little bit of the oil. I added the mushrooms to the pan. I'm gonna give it one minute to like settle in and then I'll start pressing it um, while I'm waiting for there. One of the biggest reasons why people choose to not eat any oil is because of the extra calories. You don't need those extra calories if you don't have to use it. So there's an average between what is 120 to 140 calories per tablespoon of oil of like empty calories. So. When people talk about healthy fats, a liquid oil is not a healthy fat. Coconut oil is not a healthy fat. Healthy fats are considered to be like nuts, whole nuts, avocado, seeds, stuff like that. So this is starting to sizzle really well. I'm gonna drop the other pan on it and start the press. Now, automatically, you can, you can hear the difference. You can hear that sizzling and that crackling. You can hear, when I put a little bit of pressure on it, you can hear the water coming out of the mushrooms and creating that sound and that sizzle. That sizzle is part of cooking. It's part of the attractive part, right? I mean, it just sounds amazing. Now you can already see the color difference. Just a little bit more. This one's not too bad, but this one has a really good amount of color. Flipping these over. So I am gonna add another press to this. There's a couple things to look for when you are pressing it the second time, is I can feel the water coming out of it because the heat coming out, the mushroom coming out from the pan, and also you can hear the sizzling goes down because there's more water. So that's a good sign. And I don't think I'm gonna need to press these an, a lot. And if you come and look in the pan, and these are probably pressed exactly the way I want them, want them to be so I can start to season them. So same as the other one, I'm gonna use a little bit of smoked paprika, the garlic, granulars, onion, granulated, the sage, thyme, rosemary mixture blend, right? Black pepper, a little bit of salt. But before I flip this though, this is what I would normally do. I'd add a little bit more oil. So I've already added some, but I'm gonna add a little bit more. Just on the sides, just a couple drizzles on the sides to make sure it gets underneath the mushroom. Push that over. Okay, and now I'm gonna press that down before I season the top side. Just another press to give it the even sear. Just a little bit of pressure. So I'm gonna season the top of these now, a little bit of the onion garlic, 
smoked paprika. Salt and black pepper. And the sage. So then I'll flip these over. Now, a big difference I can see now is that just the crispiness of it, it's just a lot more crispier. But you know, after you dunk it in sauce, we'll see how it comes out. I'm gonna give this a quick press. Make sure it's even. All right, so I'm just gonna give these, shut the heat off, right? I'm gonna put this here just so you can see. I'm gonna flip it over just to make sure it's the way I want it, which looks great. And you can tell the difference from the last one. Just the crispier, crispiness of it. Dunk each piece. Fully submerged. I already labeled the parchment paper. This one's the oil version. Whether you use oil, whether you in cooking what you eat or not, you still need to use oil on these pans. So I'm just gonna add a little bit after I rinsed it out to take care of the cast iron. I always add a little bit more oil and just rub it around. There's a little much here so I can use them on both. This helps seals it for the next time you use it. Helps clean it out easy. I even do it like on the handles, underneath it, all of it, just quickly around. These pans will last forever if you take care of them. So now we have both versions. For at this point, they both look the same. This one's labeled no oil, this one's labeled oil. Oven is preheated to 420 degrees Fahrenheit. And yeah, we're gonna pop these in the oven and I'm gonna cook them for an extra 15 to 20 minutes and I'll determine how long as we cook them. I'll check them at 15 minutes and then we'll probably pull them around, around 20 minutes. I'm not using the grill because most people don't have access to a grill. You can just use this and pop them on the grill if you want. Um, you're not gonna add any oil at that point anyways. So I'm gonna use the oven to be most uh, accommodating to as many people as possible with this recipe. So we'll just pop them in the oven. So I'm gonna put them both on the top rack same, so there's no difference right there. And we'll cook these for 20 minutes and I'm gonna check my corn. All right, so let's just pull these out of the oven and check them out. It's been 20 minutes, okay? I, I surpassed the 15 minutes, now it's been 20. So we'll just go right in and this looks amazing. So this is the no oil version and this is the oil version. So really, you cannot tell too much of a difference other than this is bubbling a lot more for some reason. And this has a little bit more crispy burn edges. But I don't think that's gonna stop anything. So what I wanna do is I have two plates here. So I'm gonna get the nicest one of the no oil. Right there, looks beautiful. Oil. So I'll try the no oil one first and we'll just talk it through. It looks the same, pretty much the same. I don't think anybody could tell the difference if I put this in front of you, if you know that I cooked with oil. But I know that this one has oil, so it has the extra calories and the, the oil in it, right? This one, just the straight up barbecue sauce and the seasoning. So let's try this. I mean, it looks great. Looks like a regular mushroom steak. Well, wicked one. And then let's get a taste of it. It's really good. I mean, the sauce makes it. No matter what you're doing, it really depends on the sauce a lot. So use your favorite sauce if you're gonna cook. Whatever you decide to cook, use your favorite sauce. And that sauce is really good. What I'm not getting, what I do get, is it's very fleshy. It's very meaty. 
That's exactly what I'm looking for and why we do these mushroom steaks. I'm not getting any crispy bits in it. That's the only thing I'm not getting. But other than that, it's amazing. And it's well worth the effort to do no oil. If you're watching your calories and you don't want that part of your diet. So I'm a huge supporter of this one. Uh, I'll move on to the next one. So this one has oil. I mean, it looks amazing again. Very easy to cut through, very meaty. The slight difference. There's a little bit more of the crispy bits in there. And that texture is just, it's definitely more rich. It's a lot more dense. It's not as light, I would say, comparing them both now to the, for the first time ever doing this. This is a little bit lighter in taste and texture. And this one is a lot more denser and more indulgent and a little bit richer is how I would describe it. But the flavor is on point for both of them. So depending on what you want to do, if you want to put the effort in, I'd suggest trying it with no oil if you're making these mushrooms. And then if you want to use oil, use oil. I mean, it's all your call, you guys. I'm not going to say which one's better than the other because they're both amazing. And the whole point of all of this is just to get people to eat more plant-based. Once you're eating more plant-based, then you have that whole spectrum of eating wicked and healthy. It's what we're all about, is just showing and sharing recipes of how to eat more plant-based. Stay away from the animal products. That's, that shit will kill you. Not to mention we don't need to be killing animals. This mushroom steak, oil or no oil, is amazing, and you're gonna love it. For other recipes we have, we have the vegan barbecue that we did that has no oil in that other than maybe the sauces, but I don't even think so. But check out that recipe. And then all the other stuff we have. We're here for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to subscribe, make a comment, leave, like, whatever, sorry. Do, just do all that really cool stuff. You guys are the bomb. Sorry to point the knife at you. And we'll see you on the next episode. Hey guys. Mother <laughs> Oil, no oil. No oil. No oil, no oil. <laughs> okay.